is 2.33 p.m. on this Thursday, 19th July. Proud. She left the same time I did. Seeing the Jennifer. Apparently, she's stuck in traffic since then. So, Jennifer Lowe, 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 Jennifer Lowe,
So was there a request for action? Yep, after we open the public comment. <laughs> it's such a nicely structured environment, I'm unaccustomed to it. <laughs> it's too organized for our own. <laughs> yes, we will have a call to action. If there's no, I guess, questions from the committee, I'll open it to public comment at this time. If there's any questions or comments about this item 1A, the 2015 to 18 administrative modification number 5. Any questions? No. Any questions? <laughs> 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 All right, hearing no questions, right? Madam Madam, I'll ask the committee. Um, 2015 2018 tip administrative modification number five. Sir. So is it going to the process? Just because that is the Okay. All right. So move to approve by myself. I can go to Mr. M. And then Ann's saying no. No, Ann's saying no. I'm saying please. Stick with Jim. I know. She said Mr. M. I keep looking for my dad. <laughs> Are there any opposed to the motion? So do I. Hearing none, are so moved. 2015-18 tip administrative modification number five. All right. Moving right along, the next item is an informational report. So the first item is the Northern Lights Benson Boulevard pedestrian safety study. Hi, I'm uh, Kevin Jackson. I'm the project manager for the study and um, Josh Cross with Lounsbury is here in case you answer ask any questions I don't have the answers for but uh, basically uh, this study was recommended by uh, motorized transportation plans uh, both the head and the bike plan and, uh, so $150,000 was programmed and we hired a consultant Lounsbury wanted and uh, looked at it uh, problem as you all know is that uh, the pedestrian facilities are very poor in this corridor uh, very five foot sidewalks and lots of well at the time of the study the the ramps were not ADA compliant uh, those are being upgraded with uh, some resurfacing projects I think this year um, but basically Northern Lights has got five foot sidewalks and encroachments lots of encroachments in the sidewalk and um, numerous driveway curb cuts Benson it doesn't have as many uh, uh, curb cuts uh, in driveways, but they they tend to be allow for higher speed um, in, uh, entrance and exits. And uh, the pathway on uh, on on Benson is in bad need of repair. It's got sinkholes and big cracks and, and all kinds of stuff. And uh, uh, but anyway, the design team took a look at um, uh, the traffic counts and, and looked at 10 years of accident data and. Uh, it basically came to all of you have the the okay great the executive summary I didn't think we wanted anything more than that um, we can certainly make the the report available to you um, if you want it, the entire thing but um, when it was all said and done they came up with four possible projects as far as capital improvements go the easiest one is to re uh, reconstruct the um, uh, if you look at the look, page three of the executive summary, the uh, project number one is reconstructing the pathways along uh, Benson. Um, that one can be done fairly easy. No right of way is required. No temporary construction permits or easements. And uh, the second uh, project recommended was reconstructing the sidewalks along um, uh, Northern Lights. Um, and the third is to possibly convert 29th Avenue and Photo Avenue to uh, bike boulevards to help supplement the Muni's 27th Avenue uh, bicycle boulevard project. And the, the last project is the most expensive, uh, requires the most right of way, and that's to reconstruct the intersections within the project corridor. I, I guess I never did tell you that the corridor goes from uh, Minnesota to Arctic Boulevard, Northern Lights, and Benson. And so every one of those intersections has, uh, that's where most of the accidents were occurring, is at the intersection. Uh, but that, um, that, that project requires a lot of uh, right-of-way acquisition. Probably is the furthest down the line of being able to be funded. So, have any questions? 
So you said that this was the Northern Lights and Benson from Minnesota to Arctic? Yes. Okay. And it was that the recommended, I guess, study area from the non-motorized? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, the bicycle plan indicated a high number of uh, on, you know, collisions between bikes and, and uh, vehicles, and the pedestrian plan did as well. And I think the pedestrian plan came right out and s suggested the, the study, and that's, I think, why it was uh, funded. Okay. So you said that project number one of making improvements to the um, trails along Benson relatively easy would they stay the same width and it's just kind of fixing the subsurface because I know it's in it's all over yeah. the place. Yeah that was the idea. I think there's a there's a lack of delineation along the um, pathway on the south side and it, during the winter uh, walkthrough it was noted that uh, the when it was cleared they didn't stay on the pathway you know because they had no way to know where it was it kind of veers in and out and, but there are some adjustments that could be made that would improve it as well. Yeah, the pathway on the north side needs uh, bends in this really poor shape, too. They probably, I think the one on the north side of Benson is a little narrow. Those could be done relatively expensively. Uh, the winter walkthrough condition, uh, when they did the winter walkthrough, I wasn't able to defend that one, but uh, you know, the, the team observed uh, it's a severe problem of uh, businesses st storing snow on the sidewalks on Northern Lights, you know, and so it was a, if you look at non-capital uh, non improvement strategies, there's discussions of uh, maybe doing some education on the, the businesses about what the uh, codes are and things like that. But the, you know, the problem is there's just very little right of way store snow so not an easy problem to solve. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry I had to step out for a phone call. Did, are any of these being separated or did somebody ask that before? Or can they be separated? Oh yeah absolutely. Projects? Yeah they were just uh, they just the priority is just in the, the relative cost. Yeah, I mean, separate, what I'm saying, separate, separated from the street. Is there enough right away to separate the pedestrian facilities from the back curb? On uh, Northern Lights? On either one? Or not on Northern Lights. Okay. Um, the <coughs> pathway along the south side of Benson is already separated um, okay. quite a bit. And the pathway on the north side of Benson is fairly close to the urban gutter, I think. But uh, the placement's not bad, it's just the condition of it. It's old and in need of repair. Northern Lights is the biggest challenge. Um, with the current construction and the new construction, is there any concern that the lights will be separated from the main street Yeah, at the DMV especially. Yes, that's the driveway specifically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The the study recommends uh, realigning that, bringing that up next to the road. That was an obvious, like, oh man, you know. The report has a lot of uh, at the in the in the appendices. It's all the proposed strategies, but I didn't didn't want to kill that many trees. But I'd certainly, like to make the whole thing available to you electronically or archived. So these recommendations are ones that could be considered by the MS Transmission Yes. The first two are relatively easy. And inexpensive? Yes. Everything's relative. <laughs> Guys, did you guys? Sorry, Brian, Brian Hill, BC engineers. Um, did you guys look at all at, at um, maybe some of these, some of these strategies or convictions, these improvements that you looked at, uh, incorporating incorporating those into the like, um, like MNO, like rehabilitation of 
pavement and things like that. You mean future projects? Yeah, like to, to combine it within. within well, you know, this, I think the purpose of this study was just to identify okay. projects that could be so that's advanced. Next. Yeah, you know, maybe these could okay. be advanced either standalone or with other projects. Probably gotcha. with other projects. Great. All right. Thank you. You bet. Project one and two fit into the acreage area wide trail rehabilitation project starting within the tip? I would think so. But I don't know if that's my. To me, it sounds like it's already existing. You don't have to deal with right away. It's just a rehab. Yeah, and we're, uh, you know, we're, we're, the CRW is the design team that's uh, working on all that stuff. And right now they're working very, very hard on. The bike plan implementation projects to get all that obligated, um, but they're about to begin on the pedestrian uh, implementation plan. And uh, well, this is actually a separate one. I guess, do you know what the status is of the trails rehab project? The that is um, kind of third on uh, the priority list of, for CRW. Um, the municipality. Uh, hired CRW to implement um, all three of these things, basically. All three of them. Yeah, yeah, and, and so uh, they're going to be focusing on the pedestrian implementation next. And as far as the trails uh, rehab plan, the Park Service has indicated that their preference uh, would be Fish Creek Trail. And so uh, I think there's a number of bridges on that. Um, very little information is available. They're just, I think, about to get out there and do surveying right now. That would be the, the first project, I think, that we would want to tackle for the uh, trails rehab. And then, but it's mostly it's just a pot. You to put all your trails in there, and then you have to figure out which one fits, which one should be obligated, which one, you know, and if you have one project that uses up this much money, but you, I mean, little projects that may not be that much, it's always good to have them in the, in the pot, in the list. And, um, yeah. even though they, even though they may be in the history list or in the, Bike list, but if they fit, and we already have a project, what's the idea that this catch all? Probably the tip is to try to. Um, like, like Kevin mentioned, I know the information for the Fish Creek Trail is that it's, it's a priority, mm -hmm. but it's also been identified as a relatively difficult project in the sense of the environmental portion of it because it's within the floodplain of Fish Creek itself, and figuring out going through the environmental process for that could be kind of a long process. So it might be nice to have some of this other, I guess the question comes down to whether the trails along Benson are considered part of the area or the trail system, I don't know, but they are existing trails and they are part of the core network, especially for Midtown. That east-west core network is one of the identified areas that needs improvement. So I think it's a great opportunity. And especially if it offers, if it is more clearly de delineated and is safe, more visible and safer at the intersections where the driveways you know, those applications that could draw people off the fence. I think there's a there's probably a lot of locations around the town that are similar and maybe we could do that for them too. This Fish Creek Trail, I think it's gonna be quite expensive. It's a, there's a number of bridges that will need to be replaced. I have have no confirmation yet. As I said, CRW is uh, in the very, very preliminary stages. They're just surveying, I think, right now. But uh, I think that they said that there may be uh, the existing trail may be in, in trespass right now, um, which I guess would mean that um, you'd have the rights already, right? Well, given the the 1.5 million in 2016 for rehab, if indeed Fish Creek isn't going to be ready, I mean, we could be looking at other This is certainly one that could be delivered um, <coughs> relatively easily. Yeah. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out that that's a, that use all the tools and flexibilities we can, I think. Okay. Is the project list currently being generated by you, the project manager from the city? or from some third party? Uh, the city park service, basically. We, I think they were the ones that were, they, um, Sierra, they asked uh, the park service, what is your priority? And that was, uh, they want to 
keep, they want to uh, maintain, I, I guess use bond funds or whatever to do the main trails. Uh, Chester Creek in particular, I think Camp, or I mean, I think Chester Creek's under construction right now, right? And Campbell Creek is going to be next on the agenda, but, but uh, this is something we can certainly look at. I mean, if that's... Another option would be um, the pedestrian plan. I, don't know. I was wondering the very same thing because I, I, my assumption was that uh, only the main trails, Campbell, Chester, and, you know, those in the coastal trail were classified as they within that area wide trail. But I don't know. I certainly like to look into that. Yeah. And the definitions. Aaron, the AMF planner for DOT, just caution with the pedestrian plan because it went through a rigorous public process and actually has prioritized list of projects. Um, so sitting there and just starting putting your own priorities first, we want to be very careful about that. So the question just is about the sure. trails rehab. The trails, it's a little different because it's not necessarily an implementation of the trails. The area wide trails, yeah, it's a maintenance. So it's more open to be flexible about what kind of projects can be done with it. So. I mean, something that could be looked at, though. Yeah, I know easily. That, I know that Midtown has been identified as a kind of a missing link for both bikes and heads, and it, it's a question, I guess, of the pedestrian plan, whether these are in the top priorities, because if they are, then that'd be beneficial. Then that'd be beneficial as well. Yeah. So right, it's just it's a conversation. I mean, if I remember, we had the, we had the, we had the pavement rehabilitation program, and we put a, for maintenance of the pavement, and people were questioning, you know, back then, why don't we have like, something similar in the uh, motorized section so we could find balance between all new construction and try to maintain our consistency? I think we were able to look back if that trail rehabilitation part was more of a, of a you know, maintenance, catch all, catch all maintenance thing for just these types of little projects. So, in addition to the big ones, yeah. so we need to get an update on that. So we had to be really creative as far as how we're going to look at each and every intersection, as well as segments between interchanges, intersections, and look for alternatives that are cost beneficial. Um, these alternatives will increase safety for non-motorized motorized users and motorized users, as well as increase progression and reduce congestion as much as possible. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jeannie. Still blinking. Uh, I, I don't want to waste time so I can get started and when it pops up we'll see the pictures. Um, so basically this is a reconnaissance engineering study uh, that we've just kind of started on. And um, the basic idea is it's the whole Minnesota corridor in Carla said from Westchester Lagoon all the way to the Seward Highway. Um, and we're looking at what are the safety and operational concerns there? What are our alternatives to address those? And, and uh, then we'll get into a little more detail on those alternatives, uh, a little bit of what's the cost and what's the benefit of them. 
uh, and, and that's kind of the end of the study is, is um, what, what needs to happen and what could happen. Um, just keep going. So uh, concerns, we've, we've already looked at safety and operational concerns at kind of a very high level. Um, we will soon have an interactive map up. I know, every time, every time. Uh, website up with a map so that the public can go there and click on a place and say this is the trouble that I'm I'm having here or that I see here and uh, we've been meeting with stakeholders at DOT and kind of getting an idea of, in, of, of what the problems they've been seeing um, we've begun uh, identification of possible alternatives and we're, we're starting with just a huge broad a range not really necessarily thinking about is it feasible or not um, DOT has a report from us right now and they're going to get back to us with here's some specific um, alternatives we want you to look at and then we'll get into a, a more detailed analysis um, so we'll, we'll um, do a little more detail on the operations and safety maybe collect a little more data than we already have um, we'll look at how long it will take to implement each of these alternatives, um, the construction costs, maintenance and operation costs, and, and once we've kind of got a, a good idea of what all these alternatives will do, we'll have an open house and, and let people talk to us about what they see their problems are and how they, what they think about this broad range of alternatives. Okay, so basically the the, um, the whole corridor can be divided into basically three segments. So the first segment from kind of Hillcrest Drive to Tudor Road is an urban section with signalized intersections um, and it's partial access control. Uh, the biggest concerns in this section are peak period congestion and then um, some pedestrian and bicycle um, crash problems. Then the, the second section is the freeway section that's full access control from Tudor Road to C Street. And basically the kind of concerns that we're seeing there are weaving between the interchanges, weaving on the interchange ramps. Oh, and then uh, getting pedestrians and bicycles across the, uh, across the interchange on the cross street. Those are the major concerns there. And then the third segment is back to an urban se section with uh, accurate signalized intersections and partial access control. And for the most part, that's again like congestion during peak periods. And then there are some uh, left turn crash problems at some of these locations. Um, so next steps, um, we're going to get a little deeper into the safety and, and capacity concerns, uh, get a little deeper into the alternatives and what they look like. Well, um, probably that report will be done about the end of the summer, an open house after it's been reviewed um, in the fall sometime, and hopefully the final kind of report out at the, the end of the year. And that's what I have. So, when you mentioned, I guess, is there currently a website up with an interactive map? For Not quite yet. Not quite yet? Okay. So, when, I guess, when that's up, is that going to kind of coincide with the open house to get more of the information? It, it should be very soon. The open house, not till the fall, the interactive website out very soon. And will it be kind of public notices sent out about the website so people know they should go there and call right. and provide information? Right. Okay. Community councils, uh, yeah. Okay. What sort of data, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, what sort of data have you collected thus far? 
So we have a crush data for the whole corridor. Um, we used um, it counts that were existing in terms of, of train movement and volume. So from the UNI's website, is, um, most of our train movement counts. Um, and, and, and we have the signal, the, the signalization plans at all, for all the signals on the board. I thought when I was out there, I saw some of the mileage here, and there was a couple of the intersections. Mm -hmm. We so, are obtaining some counts as well. They're getting counts first. I was yeah. just intrigued because we, we saw them. My husband was asking about it. And I'm like, hey, it's mileage. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. We're taking head counts as yeah. well as. Yeah. Yeah. There's a brief follow-up question, Brian Hill, EDC engineers. Um, brief follow-up question uh, to Stephanie's comment: um, Are you looking at all at, um, at like connectivity issues, um, like origin destination sort of stuff, with uh, either with the automobiles or pedestrians, bicycles? Because that. Uh, Good question. Yeah. yeah, and that's actually um, a lot of the or some of the concerns like Tudor Road, the westbound left, and then where are people going from there? What lanes do they want to be in? Um, there's a few different, so um, I, there's potential for doing some of the uh, Bluetooth study to show where people are going and where they're coming from. Okay. And with the limited budget, we're going, uh, can you explain give me a proposal to see how much it would be to do some Bluetooth studies at right. certain intersections where people need it? Of course, Dowling is going to get punched through. That might Relieve Tudor somewhat, but we don't really know just yet. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? Probably the committee or Ms. Hill. Um, how about the spinner couplet? Is that going to be part of this? Or? That that is one of the alternatives. Would be the couplet for spinner. Let's identify the name of the Right. Been any other the, the Bluetooth mention was fascinating to me. Uh, have there been any uh, Bluetooth Bluetooth data collection approaches like that previously done in Anchorage? Not that I'm aware of. Done it in Valley. Oh yes. Okay. But it was for signal progression, not origin or destination. Um, Was it for, I mean, was it for origin or was it for status of the system or? Um, we were looking at the origin of the system. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we had to do some of it. It's an interesting data opportunity, I think. Yeah. I'm reading technology. to kind of see once once people are getting on the highway, how long they're staying on it, where they're going, that sort of thing. I mean, and, and getting a better feel for that. So. Any other questions? piece of a petition from Mike Anchorage. I sent this around to both the AMS and the policy committee the entire petition, but I just sent you the two front pages. You already have it electronically, but the, 
the rest of the pages include all the folks that signed it. So I just want to make sure you've got another copy of that. Um, and I wanted to let you know that the interim MTP is up, um, will be heard at the assembly on Tuesday night, next Tuesday the 14th. It is on as an informational item. Uh, informational items are just that, uh, they're on the consent agenda. If the, if the committee wants to pull it and talk about it, I mean, if the assembly wants to pull it and talk about it or have questions, they can do that. If they decide they want to have a public hearing, they can do that as well. We won't know till Tuesday. Um, if they, we have had a couple of requests to have an evening meeting so that folks who have to work during the day, like, like us, but can't come to this meeting, uh, would like to have an opportunity to comment on that interim MTP. My thought is, uh, if Tuesday they decide to approve it and not have any intra, uh, any public hearing, then I can set up a time to have a, a not exactly a TAC, an official TAC meeting, but a, a listening post where folks can come, we would record their comments and then share it with the committees. So I'll know Tuesday whether or not they're gonna set a public hearing, and if they do, that will be the opportunity to comment. If they don't, then we'll set up our own meeting and make sure it's publicized and uh, the community can comment on it. Oh. Is that the item that um, Mr. Yesterday, that um, Lance was talking about the administration, wanted to talk a little bit about that item. I was not agree with you. I had nothing. I remember eating. <laughs> <laughs> and and Lance told Jerry Weaver, who's not there, not there. Um, that the administration was going to want to talk to him about that item. I don't recall it's that item, but I could be wrong. Okay, so that might have just been it. You know, public hearing or no public hearing, or whatever. It might have been yet. Yeah. But we'll be at the meeting. On uh, Tuesday, we'll let you know. So, um, <laughs> um, the meeting on the 14th. So, okay, Berkowitz's first meeting. Is this is this actually going to warrant? What's the general sense? Um, is this topic actually going to warrant? rising to the top for a first meeting discussion or is it more than likely going to be I'm just asking the question maybe never mind I will withdraw I'm just thinking out loud <laughs> no I asked I guess I asked the question too because in the previous I've only been here through one MTP the last MTP and to my knowledge the, the technical advisory committee and the policy committee never held any night meetings to discuss the MTP and the updates to it. However, there was public open houses and it did go in front of both the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Assembly for public comment. <coughs> this interim update is a little bit different because um, we're not modifying the entire report. It is merely validating some of the information in it um, to give us a little bit of extension so we can work on the full update. So we're not making changes to the project lists we're not making changes well, to a lot of things. We're kind of updating, validating, clarifying, and making any mistakes or miss on that one. So the question comes down to is, I guess, the, the public process associated with that. It does have to go in front of, I guess, the assembly, but right now it's just, like you said, just an informational item. The question is whether or not it becomes a public hearing. The, the typical process for an MPP update is that we go through our city advisory committee, we go through planning and zoning, Usually that has been the same thing in the past, and then we go through the assembly. We're required to have a public hearing. That public hearing can be counted as the one at uh, P and Z. It can be counted as the one at the assembly. It can be counted as the one at the TAC. It can be counted as the one at the policy committee meeting. It's a public meeting to talk about that. Um, usually in the past, we have had those meetings that I just discussed, and those have been in the evening, and so members of the public that can't get to this for the policy committee meeting are able to go in the evening and testify there if they if they want to. This interim update is is an exercise to restart the four-year clock so that we go, don't have a conformity lapse. We don't go into uh, the situation where we can't start any new projects and obligate new funds for projects. So it is a, a much smaller uh, and, uh, exercise with, with less to do because we're not updating the comp plan as our chair said, we're, we're not adding projects, we're not deleting projects, we are just making sure our financial information is correct, reflecting the fact that we have a certain number of projects that are done, 
and just moving forward so that we can restart our clock so that when we when we undertake the exercise to do the 2040 update of our MPP, we have an extensive amount of time to do all the work we want to do. We will have the new model numbers, all that sort of stuff. We won't have the new model numbers when when we need to get this this uh, interim one done. And so we're not doing any new model runs. We just are doing what we have, and we're making sure it's all validated and correct. And that's why. Uh, that's why we're not going through the Planning and Zoning Commission, because we're not updating the comp plan, and so we're not touching that side of the house at all. So, so it's a little bit of procedural house cleaning and open top. So yes. thank you. Very helpful. So the question you said, the question is on Tuesday whether or not it gets pulled to become a public hearing. Yeah. If not, we would likely need to have a meeting mm -hmm. in open house, something to kind of be Well, if, that if, if the... If the assembly decides they want to have a public hearing on it, they, they can do three things. They can just adopt it as part of the consent agenda without saying a thing. They can pull it aside and talk about it a little bit and then approve it with the consent agenda, or they can decide they want to have a public hearing. If they want to have a public hearing, then we will show up for the public hearing, we'll listen to whatever testimony might occur, answer any questions that might occur, and then, and then move to the next step, which is go to the TAC, adjudicate any of the comments that we've had during our public comment period and any comments from the assembly and then go to the policy committee for final approval we won't do anything else be, other than be uh, attend a public hearing that the assembly sets up if they decide to have one we won't add other meetings on top of that because it then again it's, this is an interim update this is an exercise to make sure we restart our clock I've had the interagency consultations with the Fed, with BPA and after everybody and got their, their uh, approval and buy off on this approach and I have no problem with what we're doing with the conformity, which is what is being reset for the four year time period. So that has been, um, this approach has been uh, reviewed and approved by the by the at any Now we just have to go through the process. And, and my suggestion is to wait and see what the, team, the assembly does. If they decide to have a public hearing on it, that will be an evening meeting. And there will be the opportunity for the public to comment. If they decide not to have a public hearing, then we should, we'll just set up a time when it's convenient to have a, a public meeting for the, anyone in the public who wants to show up. It'll probably, it'll probably be at the mayor's conference room, but it could be out here. But either way, it'll be in the evening. And give folks an opportunity. I guess in the question, I guess a matter of timing, um, yeah, this going through the process, when does the interim empty have to be approved by? By December 31st, 2015. Okay, so by the end of the year. By the end of this year. Okay. It has to be through and approved, right? Through and approved, yeah. I feel like it's through and approved. Yeah, so that yeah, probably means. Yeah, that's true. MHWA has to approve the air quality. Yes. Before that. So, so if I get through it, if I get through the current UAT, if I get transmitted every seven days, they've got to review it and they've got to sign it. So we've got to get it in earlier. Yeah, probably October. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm just thinking, I mean, when I'm thinking of night meetings, attendance, and everything else, generally community councils don't even hold meetings June, July, August. So usually September ends up being one of the earliest times you actually get attendance, a good, a good amount of attendance, I would say, for nice to have it during our public comment period, but as long as we have it before the next month's TAC meeting so that we could get those comments to you before the meeting, that'd be okay. great. So we'll know that we'll have a better feel after Tuesday. I would imagine we'd know one way or the other. Okay. All right. 
Is there anything else? So you had the, the letter from the back that we had and then the conversation that you were making. All right, any other committee comments at this time? No? All right, so as you can see from the agenda, there are, are a lot. I, do we have, do I, I guess, well, I guess I don't know if we have another public comment period. <laughs> That's what it, um, I don't even remember the whole process, but um, I, I think several of us are here to, to provide comments on the discussion we just had about the uh, interim entity. Okay. Um, I guess I just don't, I guess I don't know this process. I, I guess it, it's a public meeting, so you're welcome. Say your name for the record. Yeah, and actually I contacted Craig before the agenda was put in place to see whether this was going to be discussed. So, you know, I was hoping to be on the agenda. Um, uh, sure. Um, my name is Lois Epstein. I'm a former member of the uh, AMATS uh, Technical Committee. Um, nice to see many of you again. And um, I, I would like to follow up on your discussion just now about the uh, interim MTP. And I'm going to respectfully disagree as a member of the public that um, this isn't uh, something that requires public involvement in an extensive way and shouldn't. I believe it should have extensive public involvement. Uh, what we have is a de very different fiscal situation than we had before at the state level. We have a new mayor who actually uh, campaigned, among other things, talking about uh, his opposition to the Kinnikar Bridge. Uh, he received a substantial number of majority. Um, and I think there's a lot of interest in this uh, metropolitan transportation plan and the opportunity this interim plan offers to revise what's, what's there right now. Um, and uh, in terms of relying on the assembly to make a decision about whether they're going to have a public hearing, and as we heard, it is you know very early in Mayor Berkowitz's term. Um, you know, assembly meetings, as we all know, are long, and this this is a topic of great interest, and I think it deserves its own meeting. Um, I think the. Uh, the federal uh, overseers expect robust public involvement. I took some notes from the criteria for evaluation of MTPs. Federal DOT says it will examine if the MTP reflects successful participation and support of transportation agencies, the business community, the general public, environmental justice communities, and other stakeholders, employs a diversity of means to solicit and consider public input at multiple points in the planning process, and demonstrates how public input is incorporated from the goals, objectives, and implementation of the MTP. So my bottom line is the public involvement in this revision is very important. Uh, if it's going to be in place for four years, that effectively means if we stick with the existing plan that the, the new administration does not have input into it uh, at all, um, unless we have uh, the community involved and the new administration involved, we basically have a rubber stamp effort, which I uh, would argue uh, was going to be a problem for many members of the public. So I, I both encourage and recommend that the TSC hold an after work public hearing and hope you can make a motion today and approve that uh, during the public po comment period so that the public can express its views. And as our, um, Stephanie mentioned, summer is a terrible time to get public involvement for a number of reasons. I myself have a vacation later this month in early August. Uh, and I want to be there. I'm willing to cancel my vacation to um, to be at uh, an after work public meeting on this. So, and I did take time off of work today because this is important. Um, so, um, I, I think there are other projects that are also of interest besides the Kinnikum Bridge, uh, and uh, that includes the UMED District uh, uh, Road um, and and other things that will will turn out people. So. Uh, and those are significant funds uh, involved that could go to uh, other projects that may be higher priorities. Our priorities have changed. Of course they've changed. That's the business uh, you all are familiar with. Uh, so um, I know you've been working on the Kinnikum Bridge and the, the growth models have struggled to find a compelling justification and that's something that really does require extra work. But uh, you know, we need to think of the long term. This is going to be in place till 2035. Uh, yes, four years from now we may have another opportunity to redo it, but that makes no sense for us to not to do what we can right now. And I do also believe that having such a public hearing is not going to inhibit 
completion of the plan in a timely manner, um, since there are quite a few months remaining before the federal deadline for completion. So um, I, I strongly uh, urge you to, to uh, think of a motion and pass a motion uh, that would ensure that the public will have um, uh, an opportunity in the evening, or after work, five o'clock's fine, and after work uh, time for uh, providing input into this important plan. Thank you. And, you know, there are others here that may want to speak to elements of that, too. Sure, I'll go. Uh, Steve Cleary, I work with uh, Alaska Trails and Bike Anchorage, and I would echo uh, a lot of what Lois uh, said, and I know that a lot of us here in the audience and many uh, members of the committee were here maybe a week or two ago for a bikeway design uh, evening meeting. It was really informative and uh, just a great presentation. I was heartened to see so many people there, and so I think Maybe that's a little bit more of a niche market, but um, I think a lot of people would show up for this, and I think it would be a valuable, valuable thing. As somebody who's organized a lot of poorly attended evening things, I think this one has a lot of potential interest and a lot of really good um, input could uh, come out of it, and I don't think it would be that difficult to put together. So thank you for your time. Uh, John Weddleton, I'd echo what they say, and I think particularly when the idea is that this is to validate the earlier uh, FTP, so much has changed financially with the state and the new mayor that well, the, the, the same assumptions that were used before simply can't apply now. I'm Gretchen Nelson. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hear your name. Gretchen Nelson. Gretchen Nelson, thank you. And um, the only reason I'm here is I'm a school teacher, so I have time in the summer to maybe get to peace. But summer, as you just said, is really a tough time, I think, for our community to be involved in what's happening, and this is a very important issue. Um, so I am here today, you know, because I've got the time to do it, to, to say that, uh, yeah, I think with, I'm calling it the fiscal squeeze, that I think with the change in that, and. Um, the big projects within this plan, it needs to be reviewed, reconsidered, maybe prioritized. And I really, I, I, I'd ask the committee to, I don't know if this is something you do or can do, but I'd ask the committee to extend the comment period because I can't, you know, I could name on many hands how many people are out of town right now and probably can't, don't know if they've got a chance to do a comment period or need to. And um, so I'd ask the comment period to be extended from the end of August and the school kind of seems to bring people back. Um, and then to definitely set up a public hearing. You know, maybe that isn't your body's position, and I'll be at the similar meeting Tuesday asking them to do that. But um, I think there's important things to look at for the future of our city and the fiscal situation we're in for these projects. Thanks. Thank you, Roger. Anybody else? I guess I'm curious now, what is the, um, to Mr. Lyme, uh, what is the, historically, what is the time frame for actually getting, is October even reasonable? Or how much time is probably going to be eaten up? You all know it better than I do. I'm, just kind of, I'm that outside guy that occasionally walks in and asks questions. But um, for the, the multiple parties that if, uh, y'all know where I'm going with this. Is October even reasonable? Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're looking at an August approval. Is that what we're thinking we would, of? Um, and I'd like to clarify that we're, we've got an RFP right now for the next, the 2040 MTP update. We, as soon as we get this done, we're going to start on the next track for the 2040 update. That is really the time and place to address all these major issues. Um, I can't wait to start on it. I, I, I mean, we're just, we're, but this, getting this settled is taking more of staff time that we can't devote to getting that done and getting consultant on board so we can start to talk to If we drag this out, I have real concerns because if, if we skip the, if we skip the deadline, if something happens so that we don't get this done, we won't be able to do any new projects or any new phases of projects after that. Um, 
until we get a, a new MTP approved, then the, the deadline is really May 25th of 2016. Because the model update, we're supposed to use the latest, the latest assumptions and um, information, socioeconomic assumptions. The model update won't be ready until a year from now. So we are really going to be hurting if we don't get this adopted, if we don't get this approved, just to get the air quality conformity extension. It's basically extending, the, it's not rubber stamping the plan for the next four years. It's getting an extension so we can get our work done. I'm, I'm very frantic about this. Uh, we, we're going to miss a big deadline and we could be hurting in a lot of other ways. And we'll be having to deal with this while we're trying to do the new plan and, and there, there isn't enough staff time to do that. It's not that I don't want to encourage. Um, I do. I do know that TAC would want to encourage public participation and comment. Um, if we take any projects out or put any in, then that probably would require more modeling, and we don't have a new model. We we won't have a new model for another year. So we are really in a world of hurt. And let me clarify, we're in the middle of a travel plan model activity. So we're utilizing the new travel behavior um, gathered from the household travel survey. And we're transitioning over to TransCAD 6.0. We um, developed in the TAC adopted um, more conservative social economic forecast and population employment. So the data that's from the old model for the interim MTP is older. It's from 2007. Whereas this data is from 2012 and will reflect more of the current economic conditions and growth patterns that we're seeing. So we can provide hopefully better forecasting and a more accurate picture of how we can And so it may prove wise to not revisit earlier growth patterns from an earlier data model. Very Just a quick question. Um, do, we, do we have a timeline for the for the new new MTP? I mean, what, what what is the expectation for us to finish with that? I know that all this uh, that my, uh, the discussion was essentially that we were going to buy a little time so we could do the new MTP correctly. We had to go through that the model update and get new socioeconomic data. We realized that we couldn't possibly meet the. Uh, uh, Produce a new MTP and meet the conformity deadline. So that was the reason. So, so what is our what is our anticipated date for completion of the new MTP? The TC, the policy committee, gave us direction to to do it as expeditiously as possible. And I think a reasonable goal, if we can get started, the sooner we can get started, the better. Um, if we can get started, we'll probably have something for uh, public review by the end of 2017. It just depends on what you all want to do, but you need to know what the uh, ramifications would be. If we did not, if we could, we can't pull something together in time for us not to lose money one way or another a year from now. It just yeah. I mean, it just seemed like we, we decided to do this because we didn't have the tools to inform the process. We didn't have the, the model, model updates. That we didn't. We wanted to be able to do this correctly, and so that's why we needed to, to do this interim MTP. And I would add that we did re-examine the fiscal assumptions that went into the existing MTP. They changed dramatically. I mean, we, we accounted for the reduction in state funding and and. Basically, it worked out that the federal funding compensated for that. But we have re-examined the fiscal assumptions and found that they were still, I mean, although they've changed, the, it didn't impact the, ultimately impact the, the, the existing MTP. So I think that, that has been addressed. Well, if, uh, if the, what's been proposed here, I think, or what we've been asked to consider, I think is, and if it's reasonable, we could consider doing it, is even if the, um, Assembly does decide to hold a public hearing that we could still have an open public house. I mean, you, is that a problem, Craig? Have yep. we said that regardless of what the assembly does, we will arrange to have one public meeting, meeting and and have the ability to record comments, and to, that way people can take a, a 
closer look at the MPP and talk to staff and see what went into it. Is that okay? Does anybody disagree with that? No, I guess my question is it a formal TAC meeting or is it just an yeah, open public, public meeting? Open public, uh, like an open house with the ability for people to record their comments so that they can be part of the record. Does that satisfy the does that satisfy the requirement of a public hearing if you do it that way? Well, we don't. The, uh, as I said earlier, the a TAC meeting counts as a public hearing. A policy committee meeting counts. They just, the feds require that you have a public hearing. Our public involvement plan says public hearing. And our committee meetings count as that. So um, you don't need to have an official assembly hearing or a PNC hearing to count. But it would provide an open house opportunity with recorded ability to give testimony if someone wants to, plus be able to ask questions and deal with staff. That seems to me <coughs> to be a, a nice compromise. Aaron and Vivian and I will be at that meeting. Yeah. Probably Brian. Uh, we will. But if, and if any of you folks want to be at this, uh, at, a, at a public uh, meeting for this on top of the in addition to the assembly one, that's great. But and if you want to get in, it would be preferable like if we could do it before the, or right, during the public involvement mm -hmm. period to try to keep on schedule to get, um, and, it, and it is, it, there is a lot of work that's gone into um, the fiscal constraints analysis just to see you know, how things under our assumptions pan out and what they need to change and moving forward and do they still remain reasonable. And there were a lot of changes and a lot of good work that was done. So it would be great for the public to see that and uh, to offer their input. So I don't have, but if we can maybe work the schedule. Do we have any comments? I, I'm kind of on the same line. I don't think we should get hung up on we can't have it till after summer because, you know, people are busy. If people care that much, okay. they'll be here. And and the it's it's having the opportunities to make things. Within the next couple of weeks. And I, don't, I guess the question comes: Do we need to have a motion to do so, or can we just say, "What?" Can I say that? Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I have a gap. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. 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 I guess, can I just throw in sort of one last comment? Um, I, I think that after Tuesday, I'll have a much better understanding of whatever it was that just happened here. Um, hearing, I, I'm going to be very interested in seeing what positions the assembly and the new mayor uh, delineate on Tuesday. I think there's probably some elements here that, uh, through my own ignorance, I'm not familiar with. I go to too many public <laughs> meetings, as it is. but yes, I'll probably do that. It will be very interesting <laughs> to see, see the direction and see how things go for a lot of reasons. So, I'm excited to see how things go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, are there any other committee comments or questions or comments from the public at this time? All right. As you can see from the agenda, though, there are lots of meetings coming up as well. Uh, next, there's a trade advisory committee meeting next Wednesday. The policy committee meeting, as always, is two weeks from today um, downtown. There will be a travel demand um, model work session in August, and also a model user group meeting in August, and the CM and the CMP draft work sessions. So lots of work sessions. I know I have lots of things on my calendar right now. <laughs> um, but. Uh. I forgot there's one meeting that should have been on here, but it's not. I believe it is. There's a 
work session on the public involvement plan what next Tuesday. Tuesday the 14th. Oh, yeah. Isn't that just what time? It is at 3 o'clock. It's in room 170. The, and the assembly meeting right there. It's the same day as the assembly meeting. Yes. But yeah, it's earlier. It's from three to four thirty. That's true. Is it? It's, it's it, at room one seventy. It's the it's kind of the fishbowl. Oh, that's room. The one that's yeah. glass on all sides. So you're gonna say fishbowl. It's a fishbowl. We have two fishbowls. That's the big one. There's a little one. It's the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's next next Tuesday, July fourteenth, um, same day as the assembly meeting. We'll also be, like I said, the PAC work session on the public the public participation plan. Okay. I think that's everything for today. Let's go here. 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 Let's